Is it done? It's done. I'm afraid the ghosts from the past come back to haunt us. I want you to get to the island immediately. Aren't you Will Owens? Officer Owens. Didn't your sister get killed all those years ago? It's been three months since the brutal killing of one of Mr. Klein's most prominent community figures. I don't know how deep this runs, but I'm going to find out. And hello, welcome back to another edition of Takeover Tuesday. I am your host, Benner from Blackfont Distro, and I'm here with the amazing Vicky from MakeupBilly.com. Vicky, how's it going, dude? How are you? Good, man. How you doing? Good, good, good. Um, just a, a, a quick thing. Uh, I just want to say uh, that is the, uh, historically, uh, that's a record. That's the loudest trailer that we've ever played. <sighs> Uh, oh, okay. As an intro to this uh, to this show, but it uh, looks like a really really cool project. Um, you're here. You took over our Instagram today. Uh, we're gonna get to, the, to we're gonna get to Mystic Pines in a in a second and talk about that uh, and how your involvement uh, is kind of a uh, key to that to that production. Um, but uh, hey, listen, let's uh, thank you so much for taking over our Instagram today, posting all kinds of crazy awesome stuff to our feed, to our stories, mask making, behind the scenes, pulling back the curtain on what you do. Um, how you been, man? How did you how did you like everything? It was fun. It was a lot of fun. It's one of those things, eh, where you're like, all right, y'all have different followers than me, but I just kind of went with it. It's those moments where you just post all kinds of fun, right? <laughs> you just awesome. go with it. <laughs> uh, I am, uh, of course, wearing my uh, shining t-shirt that uh, whoop, whoop. Um, you can get from yourself, as well as a lot of other designs when we hit up conventions. We're going to talk a little bit about that later on, too. And I've also got on my Texas hat, my Billy Bob's Texas hat, which we will talk about Texas in a little bit. And uh, as you can see from the bottom scroll, uh, we're going to talk about some mask stuff. We're going to talk about some horror flicks, some hair metal, and cheeseburgers from Texas. So you ready to go? Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, so um, just for everyone watching, if you are uh, if you want to post a comment or uh, have a question for Vicky, throw it down in the comments below, and we'll throw it up on the screen during the interview. Okay, so during the broadcast, we'll be able to throw your comment or question on the screen, and we'll try and get to as many as possible before the end of the show. Uh, but let's dive in. Um, it's been a crazy year. We were just talking before we got on the air. Um, we haven't talked in a long time, probably mm -hmm. about three or four months, um, yeah. but we're you know, we still check out each other's stuff on Instagram and what we're doing and stuff. And we were just talking about like, hey, what's 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 happening this year and and um, you know what's been what's been how how many challenges that 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 us as small business owners have had to kind of endure. Um, but let's um, let's talk about before we get into that. Let's talk about the trailer we just saw. Um, okay. You were Cystic Pines is a new movie coming out uh, soon by its uh, by a production company called Dream Warriors. Mm -hmm. And uh, you had um, something to do with the mask in the movie. Is that correct? Totally, yeah. So the directors and writers approached me and they're like, Vicky, man, like, we got an idea. And it's a dude who has mirrors of face. Because I was sick of that, right? When you're going to strangle somebody and you're looking at your face while, like, hitting that moment of death. So I was like, all right, let me putz around in, like, my studio and figure out what we can do. We spent, like, many a night just hanging out together, trying to brainstorm how we do it. And finally I was like, okay, screw this. Started sculpting, started getting it going. And we ended up getting like these mirror type plastic pieces. And I had to figure out how to like integrate that into the mask. It was such a pain in the butt. Uh, the director still has that piece. I don't have that piece on me. I do have the mold, <laughs> but yeah, it was such a challenge, but legit, we nailed it. 
filming was crazy with it. Um, and like one of our last shots, like, I, I don't know, I think you see a quick tidbit of it, but we do a shot where he gets shot literally and the mirror piece had to fling away. And it was like those moments where you're like, oh my God, you have to pull it at like the perfect time. We had like a piece on a string. We had like the mask, the under mask on him, bananas, but hella worth it, man. Like he's so scary. Like he, he's so tall too, like genuinely, and like the sweetest guy, Clayton. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's such a cool, it's cool, it's such a cool looking mask because, um, like you were mentioning, like you know, you see yourself, like that, the dying or the like, character dying and, and seeing the reflection before they die, and and it's always a cool concept and a challenge to come up with something that looks sort of, um, I don't want to say iconic because it's brand new, right? But something that looks like and that that has that sort of iconic uh, idea behind it. Um, right, you remember yeah. you showing us like some clips of it. I think it was last year. You're like, hey, mm -hmm. man, look at what I'm working on. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. And when I saw the trailer, it, it really stands out as kind of like a focal point for the movie. And, and it looks pretty good. Do you, know, do you know when that's coming out at all? Or So right now we have the first episode basically down. We're just pushing to get funding to be able to make it the full series, right? Right. So it's, a, it's, a web, it's a web series. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're basically pushing on those avenues right now. And like you said, it's been really tough. Like you know walking into like production places like you can't really push for that much at this point there's not much any filming going on especially in montreal right you know? so yeah but uh so stoked it's such a good team of people and like again like i had chills i still get chills <laughs> you know what I, mean? it's, I, I think it's so well done and legit like you said he already seems like an icon he has so much presence too on set. It's like, oh, I have some like behind the scenes shots, like when I was doing makeup and I had to do like a nail coming through like a hand. And like I'd like stop, putz around, like take some photos of like them, like getting like pictures of mirror face and stuff and like shooting them. And it's just like, oh, like you just see like how tall he is, how like, you know, that it's how you, it's like mad cinematography at work. I was like, damn. <laughs> yeah. And and what's the and, and so uh, it like obviously you're a huge horror fan that doesn't we don't need to talk really about that we'll get to that, to that later on in the interview for sure but mm -hmm. is that if, if you've been making masks for the better part of a decade now um, we met like way back in the day when you were kind of first starting I think in year two or year three so we've mm -hmm. known each other for a long time but uh, is is moving into film and doing design work for film something that uh, that you've always wanted to do or it's always been a part of it. Like I've always said, I just want to make masks in the creepy basement and sell to other collectors. So it's always been like my thing, shooting the shit at conventions. But it's also that amazing moment where you can ship something off and somebody like shows, this is what I do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think we're just, we might be running into some technical difficulties. We always run into this around seven o'clock at night. So, uh, Vicky, you might have to log back in. We'll see if you can kind of, kind of come back here. But um, let me just, uh, yeah, we're uh, we're we're definitely joined by uh, by Vicky Garisi, who is uh, runs uh, Makeup Billy in uh, Montreal, Quebec, and uh, she's going to pop back in right now just while she fixes her internet connection there. Uh, unfortunately, it's 2020, so of course uh, that's what we have to run into sometimes. But uh, you can definitely check her out on www dot makeupbilly.com uh she does a lot of custom work and uh let me just throw this up onto the bottom there uh so definitely check out her website www.makeupbilly.com uh, and you can also follow her on instagram at makeupbilly so uh oh and here guess what here's vicky back uh, i think we've got her back hey what's up dude i made it i made it <laughs> um it just happens sometimes uh it's seven o'clock it's dinner time everyone's on the internet it's 2020 we're in the midst of a global pandemic so um uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, we're just mm -hmm. you know, just kind of uh, uh, you know promoting your website there, makeupbilly.com. You're just saying you did a lot of you do a lot of custom work and uh, you do take yeah. custom orders, um, and that's uh, that's kind of your bread and butter, right? I know that, that uh, you go to conventions and your presence there and do a lot of online marketing, but mm -hmm. but, but really is it's the custom work that uh, that that is sort of like the the big chunk of your business. Is that right? Yeah, legit, and it's like that mask Edward that I made way back in the day. Uh, I sent him off to one of my uh, director buddies out in um, Vancouver, Stephen Sawchuk, and he ended up making a short with it too, called Forward. And I had no, like, I knew he was filming something, but like, this many years passes, and like, you have this final piece, and I'm like, yes, it's those moments where you take gambles working with people, right? 
at the same time, I love sharing my work. And it's always like, I just want to see anything. Like, sh show me what you can do with my work. I love that. Because I don't have that kind of skill behind a camera. You know what I mean? I, mm -hmm. I do the behind the scenes. So, so yeah. and uh, I mean, you posted some videos today about you making a mask today. Uh, yeah. and, and so what goes into that process? Like walk us through that. Like how do you start, like how do you come up, obviously a custom order is a custom order, but if yeah. you're making something for yourself, mm -hmm. how do you start, do you just come up with the idea of saying, hey, you know what mask I wanna make? I wanna make this mask and then go to town on it. Or how long does it take you from kind of come up with the, coming up with the idea to like really kind of having a mask that's finished that you can that you can put on? I would say, of course, I'm still working full time. So it takes about a month if I'm legit like focused from start to finish creating like something new. Um, I just go based off my brain. Like if I'm feeling something, I imagine something, I go straight to sculpture. I don't draw first. I don't uh, I don't like conceptualize it on a smaller, like you can kind of see that, eh, eh, that little mockette. I yeah. don't even do it on that little dude. I just go ahead right on it. And then I just kind of go with the flow. If I'm feeling it, great. If I'm not, you know? And it's one of those things where you have to constantly step back and you know, reassess. But the biggest problem as a sculptor is there's moments where you're just like obsessed, where you're like, I want this to be perfect. It's kind of like my chatter. Dude, I've been working on this for over a year. I'm like, I want them to be so good. <laughs> but I'm like, there. I'm like, all right, we're ready. <laughs> but, so that, uh, yeah. And that's Chatterer from Hellraiser, which uh, we were just talking before we got on the air. Uh, uh, we actually, uh, the Black Blonde guys met that guy in uh, <laughs> Sitches in Spain. And he's like the nicest dude on the planet. Like he's like, he's the nicest. I can't tell you how nice he is. He's just like the nicest guy I've ever met. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. If you can find him online, you should, you should tag him on that when you get it done. I'm sure that's he'll say cool. something nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, let's, um, um, so I know that uh, uh, recently you've sort of like, you know, you've pivoted more towards online stuff. Um, and that was actually kind of even last year, even when before pandemic, right? Before COVID, where you were sort of, uh, uh, one of your online personas is uh, this, I guess you would say a character named uh, Her. Yeah. And uh, I think we just, we, we saw glimpses of Her in uh, the trailer at the start for Mystic Pines, right? Which is the new yeah. movie that's coming out. Yeah. Um, but what can you tell us about how do you, like it, like she's an intricate part of your online pers uh, uh, brand and, and your online marketing now. Uh, tell us how where where that uh, where that character came from, where the idea came from, and uh, uh, yeah, what's what's the plan for her in the future? Man, oh man, I've always wanted to make the him and her thing into like a film, but and I've got approached by so many people, but I'm like, no, no, it's gotta it's gotta be something good. You know what I mean? Because it's such a scary thing, the two of them. Um, I created that. And sorry, I, I, what's, yeah. sorry, just just for our audience, what's what's the other character? It's him, right? Him and her. Yeah. Him and her. And you know what? Funny enough, I only have basically one of each. I made. I, I did make some doubles, but that was more just for fun. Like the the pool shots we did in Ottawa, we had a couple of extras. But there's like the two OGs, right? I accidentally did a Reddit live the other day, <laughs> and I ended up pouring that thinking it was a, a Halloween mask, like Michael Myers. And I was like, shit, what am I gonna do with it? Like, so the original, the original mold is a two-headed mask. It's okay. him and her. Oh, you wow. decide how you wanna wear it. So that's the one that they used to shoot in Mystic Pines was they were using the double-headed one. That's like my OG thing. Sculpting her, I used the face of the original girl from the movie Mannequin from the 80s or 90s. Okay. Like 80s. 80s, yeah, yeah. I yeah. forget her name. She's she's such a babe. Um, so I focused on her face basically as like the shape, and then the back face was um, the creepy dude from Lost Highway. I really focused on his kind of specific color. Oh, okay. Yeah, that guy's oh. super creepy. Right? Call me. <laughs> <laughs> Call me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like yeah. nightmares for a week. <laughs> right? But uh yeah, so I just and I'm so shy on camera and like behind like it doesn't seem like it like you know me one on one, it's different. But uh it's one of those things when you're sitting behind a booth all day, when you just put one of those on <laughs> Well, I remember like, you did um, uh, you did some some 
uh, some video shoots uh, when we were at uh, Ottawa Comic Con, which was oh. last year. So I think it was last May in 2019, yeah. um, where you were like, we we're like, hey man, oh, we're going out, and uh, and Richie was uh, was your videographer for the weekend, yeah, and a bunch of shots. If you haven't seen them, uh, hit up uh, hit up Vicky's Instagram at uh, at Makeup Billy. Mm -hmm. um and check them out if you can go back like a year and try and find them they're very very cool and it's it's so neat because they're in slow-mo um mm -hmm. there's lots of people like looking at you weird because it's a very unsettling it's a very unsettling uh uh, uh image and a very unsettling thing like it, it almost mm -hmm. tricks your brain to thinking like i'm not supposed to like that but i'm interested at the same time right um, is, is that something that you're planning on on mm -hmm. carrying on uh, as far as uh, as part of a uh, makeup billy brand Absolutely. Yeah. I had created an Instagram account a while ago, him and her 666. And I just maybe posted three photos on it. But I'm basically planning on like legit taking that like full throttle. I had an amazing photo shoot the other night. Um, <laughs> it's like legit, like when you're just bored and want to be creative, yo, social distance photography. So like I hooked up with this guy, Mark Sherrill, awesome, like local dude here in Montreal. And like, legit like never really met him before and then it was like boom let's do this and the shots we came out with were crazy people thought i don't know i don't want to know what people thought there's a couple people walking by it wasn't okay <laughs> <laughs> but uh he took some video too and i'm stoked to see that and share that with everybody awesome awesome okay yeah, we're looking forward yeah. to that like um and mm -hmm. and you know as we're talking like i mean obviously uh you know we're in the midst of a global pandemic which is still going on. We're in the midst mm -hmm. of second wave right now, which is, you know, pretty crazy, pretty scary for a lot of people too. And, and obviously hopefully we're getting to the other side, but um, as a small business owner yourself, um, uh, and, and I know you put a lot of time and a lot of focus into this over the last couple of years to kind of really up your game as far as, and raise the bar as far as like what your mask uh, business is and, and what it means mm -hmm. to like the horror community. But um, What's um uh you know what are the challenges that you're facing and what are the differences or or, or maybe there's no challenges in, in your in your your respect because you do a lot of stuff online. Mm -hmm. But like what have you how how is 2020 being different for you from from the business point of view? I would say when you go to conventions, you get a real vibe for what people are into and what people kind of want to see, and also it inspires you, right? um like you can't really do that you can't really just shoot the shit with people online be like what's your favorite scary movie it's not as upfront and you know like that like as if you're at a convention so that's probably something that i kind of miss but i've just been really trying to stay on board like I've, you see me every morning i'm constantly watching horror movies working out at the same time like i kind of keep it in my life so like it doesn't lose that you know spooky feeling you got to stay spooky all the time especially now. <laughs> so <laughs> when you can't be in a community physically, I'm finding it elsewhere. So, you know, mm -hmm. when it's not at home, it's Reddit has a lot of crazy things like Facebook. I'm part of so many awesome groups, man, horror, everything, uh, the crypts, uh, man, there's so many, so many, I can't even. And, and have you, have you seen an uptick in business based on the fact that people are at home and Maybe they want their own mask to kill some time with. I don't know. Like, <laughs> At the beginning, so many people were like, make us COVID masks. I'm like, I don't want to sell out. Yeah. <laughs> like, I like making spooky things that like are not useless, but to be like looked at and like enjoyed. <laughs> um, and, but yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you mentioned like going to conventions and stuff like that, uh, as far as, um, you know, how the, uh, uh, how the horror community is so it's so woven together um mm -hmm. we miss it too a ton because uh, we talked to a lot of people like you were mentioning right like it's like mm -hmm. we talked to a lot of people online and it's just not the same it's just like you know even phone calls zoom meetings like stuff like this is great but it just doesn't have the same kind of like tactile sort of feel like no no one's able to high five anyone or anything like that but um mm -hmm. like what's the is it does that has that brought out like at the importance of the horror community like like by not having it around physically is that it has it made it more important to you do you think man like like wanting to do conventions now like making it like double time is that what you kind of mean like yeah like i mean like, do you, do you think like i i i look back personally i i'm kind of not that i took it for granted but i just um Oof. always assumed it was be it would be there and now yeah. i realize how much of a part of of us it really is and, and yeah. how much we miss it right yeah well like i want to say 2019 was effing awesome i feel like we did so many shows you guys do we tag team there in Ottawa. Like we did tag yeah, yeah. this. 
We did shock stock. Like there were so many events that we did and then it was boom, nothing. So it's almost like that moment of reassessment where you're just like, okay, you know what? Don't get down. You're going to see these guys eventually. You know, we're going to be able to shoot the shit with all these awesome horror fans and like like-minded folk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's my vibe. I'm like, fingers crossed. Like-minded <laughs> folk. It's not so 19, 1950s, right? Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so just as a reminder to anyone watching right now, if you have a question for Vicky or a comment, or if you just want to say hello, throw it down in the comment section down here below on Facebook, and we'll throw it up on the screen. I'll give an example of what that looks like. Uh, we've got somebody popping in here. Mike Hall. Hi, Vicky. And what up, Mike Hall? Said, so, Mike, you got a question, your comment, or anything like that, uh, feel free to, uh, to, to throw it down in the comments. And as well as anybody else watching, um, make sure you comment, ask Vicky a question. We will try and get to them by the end of the broadcast. But um, before we get to that, we've got a section that we like to do on here on this program called Rapid Fire. And uh, you've taken over our Instagram all day today. You've been telling us what you've been doing. Uh, but now uh, you're in the hot seat, and we're going to ask you some hard-hitting journalistic questions. Are you game for that? Absolutely not. Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so just a couple words from our sponsors, which is Wellington Brewery. Where is here? Right here. Wellington Brewery. Uh, they got a sweet Hell's Lager. Hell's Lager. Hell's yeah. Uh, and Wellington Brewery is our sponsor for Black Pond Distro. They've kept us up and running even during the pandemic. Uh, they are the fuel that goes into the engine that keeps the car running. So uh, big thanks to uh, Wellington Brewery out there. And uh, all right. So we've got some questions for you, Vicky. Um, I know you're not ready for these. Uh, they're going to be a little bit surprising, but we're going to ease you in. And then we'll go from there. All righty. Oh, okay. Go. All righty. Here we go. So rapid fire. So help us out a little. What's your favorite horror movie of all time and why? Halloween. The, just because I'm obsessed with Michael Myers. I think he's the original? So hot. Yeah, totes. Okay. 78 and, movie. And just because Michael Myers is hot. Uh, he's super hot. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is an amazing character on that. She's like a tough female lead. And I don't know. I love it. The music, please. Carpenter's so good. Did you like the remake? Like, you know the, what? The, the, the most recent remake, not Rob Zombie's remake, but it was the, like 2018, what? right? I yeah, saw that yeah. in theaters. Honestly, it was okay, but again, it's a bit like the um, what do you gonna call it? Like the It remake. To me, it's a bit. I feel like they Disneyed it up in a way, like they softened it, which is cool because it'll get younger generations in on. Yeah, but, I think we. But okay, we got, we got you back. <laughs> we got you back. <laughs> Uh, well, you didn't hear that last part, but so, but you're laughing. So, <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, okay. So jumping on number two, uh, mm -hmm. now it's no secret if people know you personally or have met you for longer than half an hour, oh, no. uh, that, uh, you have, uh, uh, an unbridled love for hair metal. Is that correct? Absolutely. <laughs> and so, so here's a question for you. So you're out in the town with us, of course, team black Fawn. And you have the opportunity to see one hair metal band that night. What band are you rocking out to? But you have to pick one. One only? One only. Uh, I would say Maiden, man. We were supposed to go to Maiden, too. I know they're not that hair metal. Like, I love Rat. I would love loving you. Is it dirty? I would, oh, man. So many good ones. I thought you were going to say Rat, for sure. Yeah, but I, I take Maiden. I I go see either one of those. But is Maiden really hair metal? I'd say rat. Kind of. Like, I mean, they're metal, but I mean, they, I don't yeah. know. They've been around for so long that they've kind of like gone through every sort of wave, right? But absolutely, good point. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, Iron Maiden, because we'd be able to sing everything and like <laughs> solos. Everybody would have their own like harmon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. righty. So um, now uh, it, it, a funny story between me and you we have a little ritual where i i ask you if you've ever tried something before oh, and you say you no you haven't and then i'm like what and then you try we make you try it uh only food uh but um so so this is a yes and no question uh is the spicy cheeseburger from whataburger in texas for those of you who don't know whataburger is a fast food chain in texas which is amazing uh but was a spicy cheeseburger from Whataburger in Texas was better than the delicious fudge that you tried in Ottawa? Absolutely. Yes or no? Absolutely. <laughs> so you're saying I, the cheeseburger is better than the better than the fudge? Yeah. 
<laughs> and also, we also we also video we have these we had these small videos cataloged of Vicky trying new things, uh, and and she's never not liked anything. We've never given her anything that she hasn't liked. So no, <laughs> it's such a treat for me who like doesn't eat bread and like avoids sugar. It's like oh man, <laughs> <laughs> here's a cheeseburger uh, and fudge. Okay, so um, now. Uh, we, we've got one more. So two more rapid fire questions. Ready? Mm -hmm. Three, four. We've got, uh, what do you want? What convention are you most looking forward to returning to once the pandemic is over? Oh, I'd say Shockstock. Shockstock. Big shout out to Jake and James over at oh. Shockstock. Mm -hmm. boop, boop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one last one, uh, because I couldn't resist, because uh, this is just, it just makes me laugh every time I think about it. Um, but um, what are, tell us more, what are Vicky-isms and can you tell our audience a little bit more about them? Screw you, Better. <laughs> <laughs> so I make up words <laughs> a lot <laughs> and I'm convinced they're real words and I'll speak to people and assume that they know. So Vicky-ism, but like at the same time, like stop it. People don't really say that that often, but I say it way too often. <laughs> So, uh, so I do, I looked around and I was like a couple years ago, we got there was these things that you said all the time that we were like, these are like Vicky isms, like only Vicky says these things, uh, uh as much as well, more than oh anybody else in the world. So, I was like, I wonder Absolutely. if they're still in my phone. So, I looked them up and I have a top six Vicky isms in my phone. Hit Stop it. it is number one. Absolutely, do you know what the other five are? I say so much stupid shit. I'm trying to think. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, but not like say like you. You're actually welcome. <laughs> Is you that one of them? <laughs> Is it? No, it's not on the list. Oh, that's new then. That's 2020. <laughs> 2020. Um. Ah. Uh, Stop it. That's hot. No. Uh. No, it's not on the list. But I think that's a 2019 one. Stop it. What? How cute! So cute. <laughs> okay, so we've got some. We got some to add on here because they're not on here. But uh, so here, here's my list that I had. So this is a couple years old, probably. But yes, stop it was on the list. Uh, totes. Oh, of course, totes. <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, it's a problem is actually on there. Um. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. That's so oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, that's and absolutely right. The last one I had was spooky. Oh, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we need to add them. So, which one? That's cute. That is so cute. <laughs> that's so cute. <laughs> so, cute. so cute. <laughs> okay, so that's so cute. I'm doing this in live time in my Amazing. iPhone. That's so cute. Uh, that's hot. So hot. <laughs> What else? Oh, man. Okay. You're, welcome. you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> That's been my thing recently. You're welcome. You're welcome. Spelled Y E R, right? All right. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. That's planning around. Okay. So there, there we go. There's nine, nine Vicky isms now. Dude. Stop it was number one because when oh, we made no. the list, yeah. I think you said stop it. I think you said it my like, 200 times over the course of a week. <laughs> Which is Niagara Falls, right? Niagara Falls. Where did you guys have bets on me? <laughs> like, no, 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 table, no. You're like, well, we we do now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Anyway, thanks so much, Vicky, for playing rapid fire. Uh, I know it's always it's always uh, uh, nerve wracking <laughs> to uh, get the hard hitting journalistic questions that we post to our guests on Takeover Tuesday every every uh, every other Tuesday. But uh, thanks for being such a good sport about that. Um, just jumping into uh, a couple more comments. Um, uh, John, Mc John McIsaac is popping in here. Oh, let me see. Okay, so John McIsaac here has got two really great questions. So we're going to go back to back. He's saying, uh, hey, Vicky, thoughts on Rob Zombie's Halloween? Uh, I liked how Rob went in depth with uh, on Michael's childhood. Your thoughts? It's funny you just brought that up because I rewatched them legit like three days ago maybe. Um, not bad. I think it's cool. I'm, I like it that he didn't fully try making like a remake of it. He did more of like a prequel slash explanation mm -hmm. thing. But I'm still such a Carpenter fan. 
<laughs> like the first and second back to back, I'm like, oh, shivers. Love it. <laughs> and uh, fair enough. Fair enough. I, I like that. I like that movie because, um, uh, yeah, it's just a little bit more and it just gives it you something a little bit different. I mean, and everyone, yeah. can, everyone complains about Rob Zombie's version of it. But uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, at least it's something different. It's something new to watch and, and definitely doesn't riff on the uh on the first one as much as maybe mm-hmm. the 2018 one did but uh hey whatever right so uh, right. as long as you enjoy them that's all it's, that's that's what it's all about so and we got a follow-up question from john and just because because it's such an awesome question um he said uh and and follow up uh mount rushmore what's your rent mount rushmore for hair metal bands john's is poison warrant cinderella and firehouse so do you know your do you know your Mount Rushmore of hair metal bands? I don't know my Mount Rushmore, but dude, Warren, <laughs> Cherry Pie got <laughs> that used to be my cell phone ring. <laughs> I, think it, I didn't get a job because that cell phone went off and it just kept going. Cherry Pie, Cherry Pie. And I was like, Can you tell us? Can you expand on that? Can you tell us a story? I went in for like a very serious job interview. Back when cell phones were like Sony's and like Nokia's, you know what I'm saying? Like Motorola's. Yeah, I, I was like ghetto. I had like a no name. My phone starts going off. First time I'm owning a purse. First time I'm going for like a legit like, he's my cherry pie. And I'm sitting there looking at the lady like, puts her out of my bag. <laughs> anyway, the whole song went because my phone was one of these stupid Sony ones that'll play like legit the whole song. Never found my phone, and I looked at her. I'm like, I guess you're not into Warrant. Nope. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't worth it anyway. <laughs> but Warrant's a great man. Poison. So, so Warrant is up there. Rats on Mount, your Mount Rushmore. Mm-hmm. You got two more. Who else? Do you think Motley Crue? Is Motley Crue up there for you or no? Is Motley Motley Crue is pretty damn good. And then one other one. Who do you think? Dawkin. Oh, Dawkin. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Dawkin, bro. What do you mean? <laughs> there you go, John. Hopefully that, hopefully that, uh, hopefully that answers your question. So, uh, um, but uh, yeah, if you have any other comments, questions for Vicky, just uh, throw them down in the comments. We'll try and get them up before the end of the broadcast. And uh, hey, let's move on to some other questions we got for you. Um, uh, let's... Um, you know, uh, where do you, we were talking about conventions earlier before about like the importance of horror community um, and importance to small businesses and that sort of that sort of thing. Um, but how do you how do you see conventions coming back? Because we're not going to see a fan expo, I don't think. Like maybe next year, like maybe, but I just don't. I don't see one hundred and forty thousand people like cycling through a convention center over the course of a weekend. Like I just don't see that happening just yet. So how do you think, how, what's your perception of how you think conventions might come back in 2021? Honestly, I've been seeing a lot of weird like online conventions. People are trying to like sway to that. Um, also like there's places in the States that I think they did it right before the pandemic happened and or like recently. And like, I'm watching like everybody's wearing the mask. It looks like limited entry. It might just be, and I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but it might just be like smaller, more humble types of conventions that might win. You know what I mean? Like they, they might be more worth it at this point because yeah, Fenix was insane. I could not imagine that sea of people. <laughs> that would be like, uh, nope. <laughs> like, like I, and I remember going to conventions being like, there were certain conventions I would go to where I would be like, and I'm not a, I'm not a germaphobe or anything like that, but like on day three, you'd be like, whatever the sickness is at this convention, like I am getting it. Like I have it, I have contracted it. And, and it's just because there's so many people and so many people are, you're shaking so many hands and you know, it's, <laughs> it's like, up, yeah. but I'm wondering like, I mean, do you think like, uh, I mean, I, I've heard, heard some comments about um, potentially like uh, conventions coming back as more of like an outdoor sort of like market type of vibe. That would be uh, epic. Make it like because, uh, because it's outside, right? People are like you can mill around a bit more, and there's not you're not kind of in this con- enclosed space, and and maybe that kind of bridges 2021 back to 2022, when maybe we can have full scale conventions yet. But is that something you might be that into, would, or absolutely, that would be epic. Outdoor stuff, I would love that. 
it's it's just one of those things anything to kind of get you back in that whole zone you know what i mean i am adaptable <laughs> oh and before we jump in here just a quick comment from john uh, thanks guys <laughs> no problem john happy Hello. to help happy to help you with your hair metal questions <laughs> <Wait a week. laughs> yeah. what movie was that from you know what I'm <laughs> I know I need a I need a box eh? like a button to press like sound effects and stuff right so absolutely you're um, like <laughs> and uh, yeah I mean I, sorry so I just I saw that coming and I just couldn't resist but um uh, but yeah I, I think maybe conventions might come back in that respect and maybe that gives it a more of a community like it, it kind of builds into that community vibe yeah I mean, it's hard to say right? I mean I feel like do you guys have the whole drive-in thing going because they started that in Montreal. Yeah, so uh, Jake and James from Shockstock, uh, they did a couple, uh, or a few actually. Right. Uh, I think they did one in, ones in uh, Oakville, sorry, London, Oakville, Hamilton, and Barrie. I'm sure I'm missing a couple, sorry guys. But uh, but yeah, we went, we popped over to the one in Hamilton. It was really, really cool. And they That's showed awesome. Pieces and the original Evil Dead uh, at the drive-in, and they had vendor tables set up and stuff. And it was really cool. It was like, it was a neat thing to do, and it was like different, right? So, I mean, I yeah. hope that continues as well, because I think people will kind of be sort of into that to say, hey, listen, let's go to the down to the drive-in and hang out and like just, you know, we were you know, just, you know, <laughs> beers and, like, you know, watch <laughs> eating popcorn, eating everything that's bad for you. Yeah. Um, but uh, I miss that so much. Like I miss movie theater popcorn. Like I have this craving for movie theater popcorn that oh. I don't get too often. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, but it's, it's, yeah, hey, good times, right? So hopefully, hopefully they do still keep those doing those drive-ins and Maybe we'll do, maybe it's like a, a drive-in tour, right? That could be an idea as well. So that uh, would be we'll, epic. That's a great idea. We'll uh, we'll email Jake and James and we'll tell them <laughs> so we have something to do next summer, right? Guys, come yeah. on, come on, yeah. get on it, <laughs> Cannibal Cam, come on, God. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, I honestly I miss Shock Stock so much. So it's like it's so good. If it, again, oh. you always keep talking about Shock Stock on this show. Um, uh, and uh, we, we talk on other other shows as well. But if you haven't gone to Shockstock and you like horror stuff and you like underground shit, like go to Shockstock. It's like nothing you've ever experienced before. I can't explain it for you. I can't explain it to you. you it's a feeling. Go it's and legit a feeling. <laughs> yeah, you'll know. You'll know in about half an hour whether it's the, whether it's the spot for you. But if it is, you'll have a good time. So, and you'll uh -huh. see both of us. Wait, and her. <laughs> yeah uh at shock Smart. so um hey so it's just um uh let's talk a little bit about um just the business aspect of the mask industry and what you do and you're an established business owner now you've been working pretty hard on it for like like we said like better part of a decade especially mm -hmm. over the last few years you've really upped your game and made a, a really strong presence online and, and and uh, you know, created client lists and that sort of thing. You really have a fan base that you established from the ground up, grassroots, uh, all by yourself. Um, what would you like? What's is there any advice you could pass on to to anybody else looking to start a business uh, in general? Oh man, I'd say do it. A lot of people, their problem is they have a great idea, and they get so shadowed by that whole like the whole judging part, right? Because we're also um what's that word insecure right especially if it's your passion and it's like shut up drop everything and go start it don't even you know what i mean like yeah maybe read some entrepreneur books don't get me wrong don't be shy to talk to people who've already done it that's you know that's a huge thing like i've always worked like i worked in makeup effect shops before i did this on my own i needed to see what's it like what's it like working like behind the scenes and stuff and what's it like when they take orders for clients it's kind of like a moment where learn it implement it and just run with it was there a time was there a time where you reached sort of like um uh like a bit of a wall where you were like i don't know like what i'm supposed to do next or or was it has it just been you just kind of kept going through through every year every every season that sort of stuff i think it was more like you know what like when i began this i was very much focused on i'm creating this company i got incorporated i was under this thing called macabre Productions, and that's how i started and i was like i, I always wanted to make movies too so to me it was like great I'm, I'm making this umbrella that i could eventually do that from and then it's like i realized people don't care about a company they care about 
the artist. They care about the person behind there making it. They care that we're human too. They want to know that, you know, you're silly better working for Black Bond, fucking killing it and shit. And like, you know what I mean? They they like that personal thing. And I agree with that. How many times do you buy off of people that you're almost like, you know, I'm like my, like, you know what I mean? You kind of connect in that sense. So that's when I finally just said, you know what? I did a lot of big life changes and shit. And I was like, I'm doing this. I'm going all out. And, you know, when you put your 100 billion percent in, you get back. It's always it's always how it is. A lot of people pull that whole, uh, fuck, what's that book? Uh, where, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, Which book? It's, it's all those, like, self-help books where they're all, like, the power of, like, envisioning it what's that called oh the secret yes yeah <laughs> absolutely so i read one of those books but about entrepreneurialism it wasn't like the other ones or whatever but the only thing that really stuck out to me was legit work hard and you'll get it back and it's one of those things where it's like also be smart if that's what's working if that's what's not you know or else it's like that classic like are you nuts you're just going to keep doing the same mistake and you know yeah I mean, it's 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 funny because um, I, we should have we should we should tell a story too that the, how we met each other um, is that we went to Montreal Comic Con one year and we had mm -hmm. a Black Fawn distribution booth set up and you just happened to be our neighbor like, like <laughs> it, was, it was a random thing. Oh no! And then uh, we don't unfortunately we don't speak French, whereas you do, and mm -hmm. so we had a lot of uh, uh, francophone um, uh, horror fans that came up that you know we. I mean, we we're horrible. I mean, we're we tried we tried to fumble through the best we could, but there was there's times where I'm just like, I'm just I'm totally butchering this. Uh, hey, psst, Vicky, like, and we just met each other that weekend. I was like, can you? Can, like, I'm sorry. Can you just can you just tell this guy that about our movies because I feel bad because I can't communicate properly, right? And um and, and and you were super helpful that whole weekend, and we became buddies after that, and and we've mm -hmm. known each other ever since. But the one thing I think like we've always uh, tried to do is that it doesn't matter who comes up to the, our booth, like try and be engaged, try and say hello, try and like mm -hmm. talk to people. Like, and you don't need to sell them something, but you just have to, you know, just, just, just talk to them. And I feel like a lot, sometimes a lot of vendors, they get stuck on their phones or they're sitting behind the table and they're not engaged. And I feel like that's one of the main things you can do. And I knew that right from the get go when I met you, cause you were doing that with your, with your customers and the fans that were coming through to your booth and checking out masks and stuff. Mm -hmm. And like, I really do feel that that's a that's a huge thing. It's a very easy thing. It doesn't cost you any anything. It doesn't cost Customer you. Customer service you is so huge, so huge, and it's just all also like just a genuine. You know what I mean? Like, if you're at a comic con, it's because chances are you probably like who's at comic con. You know, you probably like one of those people who are coming. If it's Jake the Snake coming to sign, you're probably like, oh yeah, dude, you know? Jake the Snake is the man. He's <laughs> he's the man. Okay. Also, also, if you want to know, uh, uh, Vicky would never publicly admit this, but I'll tell you how cool uh, Vicky actually is. Is that one time I was going on about how much like I love wrestling, and and she went out and bought me. She found a Brett the Hitman Hart like wrestling magazine and bought it for me at this convention. She was like, "Here you go, dude," and she threw it on the table. And I was like, "What is this?" And she's like, "Oh, magazine found." So um, always, it's always awesome when yeah. we link up at these conventions and stuff, and. Uh, um, I totally miss you a ton, but mm -hmm. let's, um, and so the rest of the guys too. So hopefully we can get back to, back to, back to doing, uh, what we do, uh, in person. Um, but just before we go, um, tell us a little bit about, do you have anything coming up for 2020, the rest of 2020? I know everyone's trying to get out of this year as fast as humanly possible, but do you, do you have anything coming up for the rest of 2020 or, or anything coming up in 2021? My biggest push right now is uh, I invested in some uh, new heads to sculpt on because I've been using like these ghetto cement heads for years. So I'm like, yo, it's time to upgrade. So I'm just basically trying to pump out as much new content as I can. So I'm trying to get at least a couple originals done. And then uh, I don't want to say, okay, no, I'm going to say, I really want to make a predator mask. I love, I think he's so scary and cool. So like, there's a couple big projects that I really want to make and do. And I think that's it. We're all stuck inside. We're back on lockdown here in Montreal. It's kind of like, you know what, if I'm going to be using my time effectively, I want to use it towards creating new shit. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Again, yeah. With some, with, with, without any old ass heads, right? Oh my God. You have no idea. <laughs> like I got, I got X's heads. 
<laughs> as like cement heads over here. I'm like, it's done. Chuck it. Chuck it. It's done. <laughs> well, listen, hey, uh, thanks so much for joining us. And thanks a lot for uh, doing our Takeover Tuesday. Um, stick around after we go off the air, okay? Because uh, we got a couple of things to catch up on to you as well after we go off air. But um, mm -hmm. thanks again, Vicky, uh, you know, for, for, for taking over our Instagram today, for posting all the content that you have. Uh, both on our feed and our stories and for, you know, joining us tonight on uh, Takeover Tuesday on Facebook and on Twitch and on YouTube. And, uh, you know, we miss you a ton. And, uh, hey, keep doing what you're doing. I know that you're an inspiration to a lot of people out there, uh, both horror fans as well as uh, female entrepreneurs. We think that's important, too, for people to see people like yourself doing it the way you do it. So, uh, Thanks for joining us. Um, just a reminder to everyone out there, uh, just as our friendly, um, you just mentioned that you're still in lockdown in Montreal, but uh, hey, listen, we're telling everyone out there, stay safe and help out. Wear a mm -hmm. mask, wash your hands, practice social distancing, and think about others. That means helping out where you can, making sure people next door, your neighbors, your friends, your family, making sure people are okay, checking in when you can. And also, hey, if we all stick together, and we all do the right things, hopefully we get out of this crazy, shitty pandemic and we get back to the way things are used to be in 20 before 2020. Right. So, but uh, anyway, uh, Vicky, thanks so much for joining us and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Thanks again for everyone for taking, turning in for takeover Tuesday and